If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. Well, I thought I would kind of give you a little spin around, not, not a huge one, of our camper. And this is our camper. As you can see, I can reach the computer from where I'm sitting. And if I turn around this way, I can reach the door. There's the edge of the bed to the door. I'm trying to give you a little bit of perspective, and I know it's hard to give that perspective in a camera. The width of the bed is uh, a little bit further. I can here, I'm kind of sitting in the center in here. Now we also have, we also have our storage up here. It looks cluttered, but it's actually very organized. I know exactly where things at. Uh, but mostly clothes, you know, some snacks and different things. And of course, I got my computer desk. But anyway, I wanted to, to explain to you difficulties of living in this camper with two people. Recently, Carolyn and I, uh, Carolyn's been staying with her daughter, and I've been uh, living in this for uh, about a month now by myself. And I've explained why many times. And soon we'll be back together. I wanted to kind of go through the good and the bad of living a lifestyle in a small confined space like this with two people. The advantages of being by myself and the disadvantages of being by myself. The reason I want to do this is a lot of people uh, do have couples that live in a van. There are some people in my audience that don't realize that uh, there, there are a lot of YouTubers who are a couple that live in a van. So my truck and my, I think, my truck uh, camper that I built has actually got more storage space and, and space than a van does. If you think about it, you know, the cab over, I got a cab over here. All my storage can go on top of the cab of the, of the truck, whereas if it was a van, you wouldn't have that. And uh, then it's wider, of course, because it hangs over the bed of the truck. I got storage underneath the bed. I have the back seat of the truck that is used for storage. So there's just, I think in my opinion, for a four cylinder pickup truck, this thing is much more spacious than a van is. For all the folks that are gonna say, ah, you need to get a travel trailer. I've explained that many, many times, why I don't have a travel trailer, why I will never get a travel trailer. So, but that's not what this video is about. This video is to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of living the nomadic lifestyle in a van. Now. The, the biggest thing to this is this lifestyle becomes much more complicated living in a van when you're in colder climates. During the summer, we did not have near the obstacles that we had as we did in November when it got much colder. In the wintertime, you're in this thing a lot or bad weather. Last night is why I thought of making this video. The, uh, you know, I, I didn't feel well last night and I got up in the middle of the night. Now, had Carolyn been in bed, I would have had to do everything I did last night to take care of myself with her in the camper. You know, I would have had to crawl over her. Of course, this, when you wake up, you got to go to the bathroom and then you open the door. And when you open the door, that's a big one. When you open the door, the, I mean, you let all the heat out instantly. There's just not much you can do about it. We've hung a curtain in front of it before. But it, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, it's just, just a little bit just lets all the heat out of this small little space. But that is one of the biggest issues I have is having to crawl over her to get out of bed. Uh, Carolyn and I have sleeping uh, different sleeping patterns. Uh, we go to bed about the same time. You go to bed about 11 o'clock, but I get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's still dark in the winter. Remember, we're kind of talking about winter because summertime we don't have these problems. In the summer, the sun's up when I get up. And then all day long, we just kind of hang outside. But in the winter, it doesn't get light out until probably 7, 7.30 around here. When I'm by myself, I can turn on the lights. I can see what I'm doing. I can get to things pretty easily. But of course, when she's asleep, I keep the lights off. And it, it even makes it hard to put your shoes on. Uh, because now, you're, you know, I've just climbed over her. So I'll give you a perspective. I just climbed over her. I'm standing here. It's dark. And I got to find my shoes. And, never, and of course, you know, her shoes are sitting there. My shoes are sitting there. So you get those confused. And then start a pot of coffee. I always try to prepare the pot at nighttime. I have it full of water with coffee grounds already in the basket and that kind of thing. That way all I got to do is turn it on without having to turn lights on and, and wake her up. So then I get back up onto the bed. And I start working on, on my computer. I got work to do each day. Uh, whether it's making videos or working on my online business, I get back on the computer. 
This is after I've already started the generator because I went outside, started the generator. Most every movement in this camper really amplifies the movement. So it, if you'll see, I can just by barely shaking the camper, I can really get things to swing in. Okay, I don't know if you can see the keys. That's what I'm pointing at here. Since this thing's so high, the the and this would happen in a van too. You got a high top van. You do a little bit of movement in there, and it really gets it rocking back and forth because of the, the center of gravity is, is higher. Now, the what I've done to try to minimize that is I have put uh, a jack underneath the rear bumper, which has really reduced a lot of the, 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 the sway, uh, especially because when you get out of the truck and get in the truck, it would, you know, do this uh, up and down thing. Well, now that I have a jack underneath it, it doesn't do that. So in the wintertime, I also have to filter Berkey water inside the camper because I'm afraid if I take it outside, it'll freeze. So that means I have to set it up here in front of the door. Well, that becomes a real challenge when Carolyn's in here. I mean, a real challenge. Because not only do I have to try to climb over her space, you know, even if we're awake, she's still there. And so I have to climb over her and the Berkey just to get outside and back in. And every few minutes, I got to fill the Berkey up. Wintertime is just a really difficult have to deal with all these things again in the summer it's not near as bad i can take the berkey outside in the summertime so when uh, the coffee gets done then of course i have to climb back over from my computer back over to the stove uh to, to fill the thermos and fill the, the cup and then i can climb back over make sure i don't spill the coffee on her now i want to talk about the advantages all these challenges are erased by one simple thought i would not want to be on this adventure without her sharing this adventure with her has been the best thing i i have ever done i wouldn't want to do it by myself to be able to go out and look at the uh you know the the badlands and just sit there and stare at it myself I, it would have been a complete waste of time boring i wouldn't have enjoyed it at all thanks for watching click like if you like the video and happy travels